All right, uh, I'm going to explain my latest Arduino project, which was inspired by a project I saw on uh, YouTube of a guy who had taken a 555 uh, timer IC and used it to control a water solenoid as a means of filling up his, uh, his coffee maker automatically. So the basic concept was you would press a button, the 555 timer would trigger and uh, for a predetermined amount of time sufficient to fill the tank up to a full pot of coffee and it eliminated the need of filling up the pot and then pouring it into the little screen on the top of the coffee maker which is a great idea really liked it and um, decided to do something similar with an inexpensive uh, Chinese um, water valve that I picked up on eBay for eleven dollars kind of see the box here with a picture of it and um, controlled by, by the Arduino rather than a 555 timer just to give a few more options. So uh, I did that and it really works well. Uh, I'll show the finished unit. This is the prototype here and uh, currently I'm, uh, I have it hooked up to an external 12 volt supply, power supply, but I think it's going to be a little bit noisy so I will just power it from the USB connector here just for the demo purposes. Um, the only difference will be that the uh, relay will not uh, will not operate. Mm -hmm. So uh, to control the circuit, I've got uh, three buttons. Uh, we've got two buttons to control the timer setting. Uh, these two here, one um, increments the timer setting by two seconds, the other decrements it by two seconds. This is the uh, button that triggers the fill cycle. And there's just a single LED kind of buried in the wires here, but there's a single status LED that is visible um, from the front of the case in the final unit. I'm using for the prototype an Arduino Micro, and I do have a relay over here for testing out the, um, the uh, driver circuit. Now the output of the Arduino pin cannot drive the relay um, directly because of the current required by the relay and also the valve which draws a little over one amp of current. So that's far in excess of what the Arduino can do. Now you could use a relay, um, but what I'm using is this little MOSFET, which is a uh, FET or field effect trans, uh, transistor that's optimized for triggering by uh, a five volt logic level. So when you apply five volts to the gate of this device, it switches on and uh, switches on with a very low internal resistance. So it can handle quite a bit of current and um, when the 5 volts is removed from the output of the Arduino, uh, the, the circuit shuts off. Now there is, it is necessary to add, you can't see it here too well, but there's a resistor that goes from gate to ground that bleeds off the charge of the triggering uh, voltage. It acts kind of like a capacitor, so if you don't have that it won't turn off reliably. So I added that and there's also a diode here. Um, that I'm using again you can't see it but it's in back of the MOSFET but there's a diode there to suppress the back EMF or the spike that's generated by the relay coil or the valve coil uh, when you turn on the coil a lot of energy is stored in the magnetic field of the windings on the coil and when you turn it off the field collapses and generates a pulse of current in the opposite polarity that you were feeding into the coil and that will destroy um, the MOSFET, uh, if it doesn't have internal protection, I, I think this one does, but it's a little added protection, can also potentially uh, destroy or screw up the program on your Arduino if you don't suppress that spike. So there's a little um, um, common 1N4004 diode there to take care of that suppression. Um, wired backwards against the supply, uh, the schematic will make that a little bit clearer. So, um, so in operation, uh, the way this works is that you first determine the amount of time necessary with the valve and with your water pressure to fill up the coffee tank. In my case, it's 32 seconds for a full 10, um, 10 cup pot. So to program that in, um, the way this works is I've got the two set switches here. This one decrements and this one increments the time. And every time you press it, it will decrement or increment by a two second interval so it goes in two second steps. The minimum is two seconds, the maximum is a total of five, uh, five minutes worth of seconds. And um, 
the uh, change in setting is indicated by a, a brief flash on the LED. So you can see the the LED flashing there as I press it. So I pressed it five times that equates to a um, a 10 second change. Now if I after pressing it to change it by two seconds, if I continue to hold it down um, for an additional two seconds, the LED will blink out the current setting of the timer uh, after that last press by blinking out uh, three sequences um, which represent the number of seconds the timer is set for. So the first uh, set of blinks are the um, the hundreds of seconds, the second is the tens of seconds, and the third is the ones of seconds. A zero is always indicated by ten pulses. So for example, if we want to check this, I'll press and hold it, and uh, which changes it by two seconds, but you can see it blinking out there. That's ten seconds, three, and a four. So it's set right now for thirty-four seconds. Now if I were to press it again and hold it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten seconds, three, thirty-six. This is the increment button, so I'm up to thirty-six seconds. So to get back to my target of thirty-two, I press the decrement button twice to subtract four seconds off of that, and we'll hold it on the last press to confirm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, zero. One, two, three, three, and one, two, two, two seconds. Now, every time you change the setting there, it stores the new timer setting into the double uh, EEPROM or the flash memory on board the Arduino. And when the board is first powered up or reset, it retrieves that value. Uh, and it also checks to see if a valid value is in the memory location of the double EEPROM. If it's not, it gets initialized, I think, to a default of something like 60 seconds, um, and then you have to set it from there. So when you first run the code, it does set at least a valid value in the in the double EEPROM. And uh, every time you power it up, it checks to be sure that the value is within range. So I can turn this off. Uh, which would normally clear all the memory, but again it's stored in flash and we'll turn it back on again. And then if I increment or and then decrement again and hold it, we'll see that it's still set to uh, 30, 32 seconds. Okay, so all working. So that's kind of nice. Now to initiate a cycle uh, you simply press the the start button which will turn on the status LED for as long as the timer activates and it also sends on a separate pin a voltage signal to the uh, to the MOSFET which turns on the relay. Now because I'm powering it off the computer now the relay is not pulled in and um, so you won't hear that click and I don't want to turn the 12 volt supply on because the fan would would completely overcome the microphone here so I'm not going to do that but you will see it on the finished unit. So we should be coming up on 32 seconds and at that point the relay gets shut off and the um, the system enters into what I call lockout mode and that light will continue to blink for um, 10 minutes and that is to allow the brew cycle to complete and on the coffee maker I'm using, just the act of putting the water into the holding tank initiates the brew cycle. There's no other buttons to push. I'll show that in a, in a few minutes um, on the second part of the video here. But um, what happens is the brew cycle has to complete. That takes maybe three or four minutes. And then the holding tank, the heater tank, has to reheat the water. And that takes about another seven or eight minutes. So the total cycle of of uh, filling the tank, uh, brewing, and then reheating the water for the next cycle takes about 10 minutes. And this just prevents re-triggering again. So if I were to try to press the button to re-trigger, I could not. <clears throat> and when the when the um, when that uh, delay is finished, the light goes out and re-enables the button here. I also can't change any of the uh, the settings in this mode either. So. Uh, so just kind of a safety lockout. Now in the final unit, I do have um, I do have a reset button wired in that I can use to abort the um, 
the fill in case something happens that you start initiating a fill and decide later that you really don't want to. You can just press the reset button and uh, it turns off mm -hmm. the MOSFET, turns off the relay, and then resets the entire sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, so very simple. I'm using um, an interesting keypad scan routine for the buttons. It's designed for a, a matrix keypad that uses a row and column system like a telephone keypad. The reason I'm using kind of a sophisticated library with just three buttons is that that library allows you to set different actions for when the button is pressed, when it's held down, and then when it's released. And that lets me, uh, for the setting, have different functions for a, an individual press and then another function if I just keep it held down. I could, could have written that in code, but it was just very convenient to use the library, which I've used for other projects before. So it's just kind of a, a kind of a neat, convenient way of doing it. Um, and then I'm using another library in Arduino called Simple Timer that doesn't use any interrupts, so it works with any Arduino and just continually pulls the timer. Uh, fairly low resolution on the order of milliseconds, but it's perfectly adequate for, uh, for this purpose. So I've got three simultaneous timers running uh, or uh, available. One times out the basic uh, you know, coffee timing function for the valve. I've got another timer that times out the, um, the lockout period, the 10 minute period. And I've got a third that drives the, uh, the blinker at, at the half hertz uh, blink rate during the lockout period. So um, basically three timers and um, the main loop of the program basically scans the keyboard, uh, scans the timer and updates it and it just repeats that endlessly and everything else is um, is called by subroutines based on the actions of the buttons and the state of the timer. And I've got flags to lock out uh, illegal combinations and pressing the button at the wrong time and so forth. So um, all in all kind of a long program for a simple function but it does have some pretty good safety features on there to uh, prevent you from flooding your kitchen ideally so we'll see. Uh, next we'll take a look at the actual uh, finished product. So here is the uh, the final setup. You can see I've got the um, the bun coffee maker um, on the left there and then to the right you see of course the the main assembly. Let me just zoom in on this because got the camera on a tripod and it's a bit far. So you can see I've got the um, I've got the project box there with the LED and the switch mounted on the front. I have a small reset switch that resets the microcontroller on the back and I will give you a shot of the inside of this at the end of the video. On the very top I've got the uh, the Chinese valve that came with a quarter inch NPT threads and I've got some adapters on there. So to the right, I've got it going down behind the refrigerator to a to a, a T um, on the uh, ice line of the refrigerator, and then I've got the shutoff valve here on the input uh, to the valve for just safety in case something should spring a leak that can be turned. There is a master shutoff in the basement, but this just allows doing some maintenance on the system. So it goes through the adapters to the inside of the valve. Um, the output of the valve on the left hand side uh, goes to the top of the coffee maker and you can see on the very top there I've got the tube that goes into the uh, vent on the very top of the coffee maker. Now, the way a bun coffee maker works is a little bit different than, uh, than some others. You can see these two, let me zoom back, you can see the two stainless steel tanks on either side. and. Um, and those tanks actually hold preheated water, so the water is always kept up to temperature for brewing. And normally what you would do is you would slide this cover to the side, and when the cover is slid to the side, there's a small valve on the inside of the top holding tank here where the water is poured. The water would be poured through the screen on the top, and when this is closed, the valve opens and the water drops into these tanks. And uh, the way that works is that the water is displaced, the hot water in the tanks is displaced by the cooler water, goes into the brew basket to complete the brew cycle. So the important thing here is that when this lid is closed, the valve is open. So if water is pumped in, the brew cycle will begin immediately and uh, complete automatically. So pressing that button not only fills it, but unlike a conventional coffee maker, it also completes 
the brew cycle and then automatically reheats the water again. So it's uh, a little more convenient than even a conventional type of, uh, of drip, drip coffee maker where you have to pour it and then the water is heated when you turn on the coffee maker. Um, uh, buns work a little differently. So um, the bun coffee makers that have this autofill feature, the commercial ones, run about $500. Uh, this one's about 150 I think. So I didn't want to spend the extra, and this basically gives that automatic capability. So just to demonstrate how this works, and uh, I'll take this coffee pot off and use a, a bowl to demonstrate. I will show you, this does snap off on the top here. So on the inside, on the inside I've got I've got the hose just kind of tie wrapped on the inside of the vents, wrapped around, and you can see the valve mechanism here that is open when that lid is in the closed position. So the water pumps into the tank. The valve is already open because this lid is closed. You can see this pipe, or the tube rather, just kind of comes around the side of the filler here and prevents splashing because the water does come out with a fair amount of force. This snaps in like that. So to initiate a cycle, we're going to use this bowl. Since I've got a cup of coffee already on, I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to put that under there. And uh, just to demonstrate how that works, we will initiate a cycle by pressing the button. So the water is now flowing into the top. The red light is on. And you can see the, there's, uh, the brew cycle, the brew is uh, beginning, there's no coffee in there right now, so we'll just get water. But after 32 seconds, that will shut off. And the way I determined that was the amount of correct amount of time is I used the coffee pot, put the end of the tube in there, set it for a fairly long interval, and just used my um, iPhone stopwatch to you know, time, the, time the fill time. Okay, now we've completed filling. You can see the lines kind of pulse as the water shut off. And now we're entering into the lockout mode. And uh, the tank, upper holding tank, is now filled and is now draining into the hot water tank, which is then uh, going through the brew basket and then brewing. So after 10 minutes, that brew cycle will complete. The water will have reheated in the tanks, and that flashing light will go off. Now, if for any reason something goes wrong and you accidentally bump the button or initiate a cycle when you don't want it, I do have a reset button on the back, and that can be pressed to reset the microprocessor, and you can see that canceled, in this case, the, um, the um, waiting period. But if the solenoid had been activated and I hit that reset button, it would have cut that off, uh, cut that off as well. So that's the basic functionality. It's very quiet, and... Um, I like it because it does go through a rather large filter I have in the basement feeding the refrigerator ice line. So that has the advantage of filtering the, um, the water going into the coffee maker as well. So all in all, a uh, pretty good system and um, inspired by a few other projects I saw on the web. Uh, next we'll take a look on the in inside of the, uh, the project box and the controller. So here's a quick view of the uh, inside of the controller. As you can see inside of the lid here, I've got the, uh, the switch and the LED mounted. And if you look back in the corner here, you can see where I've got the reset switch wired in. Um, you can see I've got a, uh, the water line, of course, coming in. But here I've got a power uh, line from an old 2.5 uh, amp laptop power supply that I've got mounted down here on the side of the, uh, side of the refrigerator with some double sticky tape. So that provides power to the circuit and the, uh, the solenoid, and here's my, my shutoff valve. And then that goes in behind the refrigerator, which goes in just to a simple T connection to the uh, ice maker and water dispenser on my, on my uh, Samsung refrigerator. The, uh, the actual circuit board that holds the um, Arduino can be seen uh, on the left, a lot of wires kind of obscuring it because I used a, a pin and jumper system to do most of the wiring. But you can see I do have a three-terminal terminal strip here for the 
incoming power wiring and I also use that to connect the solenoid into the circuit. So basically the bottom two terminals are power and ground. The top terminal grounds the negative side of the solenoid to activate it through the, through the MOSFET. Now you can see the MOSFET transistor there back in the upper left hand corner. And where you see the red light there, a little hard to see, is the Arduino Pro Micro board itself. And I've got that taped onto the carrier board with some double sticky tape. And I've got some pin headers soldered onto the um, uh, Arduino itself, kind of dead bug style. The pins are facing upward and then I use these jumpers to uh, make the interconnects. At the very top there you can see where I've got the two uh, setting pins, the uh, two seconds up, two second down, uh, or rather setting buttons. Uh, to, to make the adjustment and, and then to write the uh, values back into double E prime as I showed on the um, on the uh, prototype. I did use some washers to mount the valve directly to the top there with some bolts, some stainless steel bolts, so hopefully that will not rust. Uh, got all the leaks taken care of, although I had to use quite a bit of Teflon tape on that on that solenoid. So um, all in all came out pretty well. Nice little package, fairly compact. Um, it looks a little clunky sitting on the counter, but not enough to get, make my wife upset. So, <laughs> And the convenience is certainly uh, certainly worth the, uh, the slight uh, unusual appearance of it on the countertop. But in any case, it's kind of tucked away. So, so that's basically it. Uh, nothing too sophisticated. The uh, program was kind of interesting. I've got a couple of minor changes I'd like to make. Um, on the software, but for now, um, working up to expectations uh, pretty much the way I, I wanted it to work. So thanks to all the others on the internet for giving me the inspiration. And um, if you'd like to see the code, drop me a line or I'll post it up somewhere. You're, you're welcome to use it or adapt it as, as you see fit.